Hi everyone, I'm Patty and I go by Patty Mac Makes Everywhere Online and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video we're going to have a little bit of a chat about your friend and mine, the color wheel, <laughs> and what it is and we're going to talk just a little bit about how to use it. So let's just talk about some basics. I did have several people write to me and request that I talk a little bit about how to use a color wheel. So we're going to just dive in to using color. And for our purposes, this is going to be related to using color in picking fabrics for sewing projects and specifically for designing quilt blocks. And you have your primaries. And then when I mix red and yellow, I get orange. And that's a secondary. When I come around here and I mix yellow and blue, I get green, which is a secondary. We come down here, we mix blue and red, we get violet, and that is an, your third secondary. Then we go into the tertiary, which is the next level down. And you get that from mixing a secondary with the primary. So we mix red and orange, we get red orange orange and yellow, we get yellow orange and all the way around. As you know, there's a lot more color than just this. And the way that we create all of those other colors are through using shades and tints and all kinds of other methods for changing color and adapting color to where we want it to be. We're not going to talk about that today. <laughs> That's, that's getting too far out. We're just gonna stick with using this to help us plan colors in a quilt block. All right, and we're just gonna let it go with that. So uh, one thing that I can show you right off is on one side of the wheel over here, we have our warm tones. And so the red, violet, all the way around to the yellow. These are the warmer tones. And then when we come on this side, we have our cool tones. So the yellow green all the way around to the violet are considered cooler tones. Something that's talked about a lot is using complementary colors. And what that means is colors that appear opposite of one another on the color wheel. So when you're looking at this, blue is opposite of orange. Yellow is opposite of violet. And red is opposite of green. The point in using the color wheel is to use these principles that are defined for us through science, essentially, about what colors work well with each other because of where they fall on the wheel. Think in terms of a quilt block that uses two colors, like a friendship star or a shoe fly, which I have coming up, and they use two colors, two shapes, and so when you work with the color wheel, defining your colors in terms of the complementaries is a really good way to make something that's going to be super harmonious and to have the contrast that you're going to want in your block. Because if you're too much the same, so if you're just going with yellow, green, and yellow, it's not a lot of contrast, is it? So is it going to give you the pop that you really want when you put that block together? Maybe, but maybe not. I like something bold, and so, you know, for me, I'm going to go more in the yellow and violet, or typically I go like the yellow to the blue. Yellows and blues are like a very standard, <laughs> like a fallback that I always fall back on when I'm stuck on how to put something together. So complementaries, those are colors that appear opposite one another on the wheel. Then if we want to talk about analogous colors, this is a group of three colors and they're all next to each other on the wheel. So these three are next to each other. And these three. And you just come all the way around. And those three. That's an interesting combination. And you can just spin all the way around. I think it's helpful if you use the cards 
to block out the other colors if you can. These three. These three, I don't know, I feel like if you put those three together, that is not going to really show any kind of shapes at all, is it? It just depends on what, what mood, what feeling you're going for. I think analogous, it's really the least contrasty because everything is kind of in the same family. So unless you start to get into something more like this or this, it's going to be difficult, I believe, to have enough contrast to pop the shapes in your block. If we go with a split complementary, what that's going to mean is, let's say that we decide blue is going to be our main color. So we say blue, and then opposite that is orange, but we're splitting the orange. So what we're actually going to be looking for is colors in the range of red, orange, and yellow, orange. So it's a split complementary. If we go with yellow as our main and violet is the complementary, then we would be looking for fabrics in the blue, violet, and red, violet families. And lastly, if we did red, we would be going with a yellow green and a blue green. That will give you a harmonious look to your color scheme working with a split complementary. If you go triadic, you're essentially picking colors that are equidistant from each other on the wheel. The easiest one and one that is used all the time, you'll see it everywhere, is red, yellow, and blue. Another triadic would be orange, green, and violet. So those are going to be your triadic schemes. And for example, let's just look at a couple of things. So here is a red, yellow, and blue. It's more of a gold. It's not pure, it's not pure hue. Uh, but it's very close to where we're working. This is more of like a red-orange, maybe. Let's see if we had to pick it on the wheel. Yellow-orange. I would place this at yellow-orange, and this is definitely a red, leaning towards a warm red. And then here's our blue. So that's a triadic. Red, yellow, and blue. Recently, I shared a Joanne video with you where I went to the store, I had this fabric, and this was a fabric that I bought online, and I didn't buy anything else in the collection. I just bought this print, two yards of the print, because I wasn't sure what to expect. And now that I have it, I absolutely love it. And I thought, well, I've got to have something to bounce off of it if I'm going to make a block with it. So what do I what do I select? And something I did was I pulled the color wheel and I took this orange because I you know that's the color in this. Everything is black and white, so it's kind of monochromatic. But then you have this pop of orange. And what I did was I put it on here and I tried to match it as closely as I could to what was on the wheel. And it's definitely not yellow orange, and it's not orange orange, and it's not really red, but it sits pretty close to that red orange. So I decided, okay, so that's red orange. What falls opposite? And it's the blue green. So I knew that when I went to the store, I wanted to find something that was blue green. And what I wound up getting was this. And it's probably a little more green than it is blue-green, but that's okay. It's very close. And when I put them together, I just think it's stunning. So that's a way that you can, if you're stuck, if you have something you know you want to use, like I knew I wanted to use this, and I just wasn't sure what to pair with it. I knew I didn't want orange. I'm not really a big orange person, so I didn't want, you know, a whole lot of orange in my um, in my final design, whatever that winds up being. But I am a blue person, and so when that came up on the color wheel, I thought, oh, I really like that. And I absolutely love them together. Another reason that I like 
these two together is uh, the shapes. I think the shapes work. So you have this large circle. So in essence, you have very large dots. And over here, we have smaller dots. So I feel like the polka dots echo the large dots. So to me, that just is another, it's another level of harmony. Let me show you another option for this particular fabric. So we're back to this one. And uh, something I picked up that was on the, uh, the wall of Fat Quarters uh, was this one. And that is also gorgeous. And I liked this one because I felt, of course, the black. The black picks up well with the black and against the white. You get a lot of contrast. But the star is a very warm, warm gold or like a yellow. And so that works well. So we'll look on our color wheel. And it's very close to that. So if we say that the dot is the red orange, then we can say that the star is the yellow orange. So they become analogous to one another. They're like very close on the wheel. And then if you <laughs> included them together, I'm not sure I would mix these, but um, according to the color wheel, this would work. So that would be if I had something that used three colors, and we see that a lot in quilting, three colors, I could put these together and they would work. And it would essentially be the split complementary because you have the blue green and then you have the red orange and the yellow orange. And then the black and the white will serve as like neutral ground. So that would be a way to put those together. And you know, actually it, it would work. It's an option I hadn't considered of putting the three of them together, but that is something. So I wanted to pull something that I thought didn't work. <laughs> and this is what I picked. And, <laughs> you know, all of these, uh, I like them on their own, but together, I just think they're horrendous. <laughs> you know, they just don't work at all. And um, it's less about the, tri they're still triadic. I mean, if you really look at this, because this is sort of a red, well, it's kind of a red violet. And then this is sort of a yellow, a yellow orange. And then you've got your blue over here, your blue green. And they're just kind of everywhere on the wheel. Um, I, I just don't like these together at all. And maybe it has more to do with pattern than anything else, but I really don't like that particular pink with these two other colors. And honestly, that's part of it. You're gonna wanna pull stuff and you're gonna either like it or you're not gonna like it. It's very personal. It gets down to your taste uh, a lot of the times. But starting here with the wheel to make your choices uh, is a really helpful way to get started. Let's look at one more grouping. So in the last video that I did for you on putting prints together, I started with this one. And I do have a project in mind for this. And in that video, I shared with you a way to um, find other coordinating fabrics. And if you haven't seen that video, I will link to it. And um, go check that out as well and see if that is more information that you find helpful. But strictly speaking, from a color wheel standpoint, let's look at this one. And what, what we're gonna find is that we're dealing with analogous colors. Green, over to orange. And really, you could add this one too, I believe. That orange is, yeah, that orange is pretty much in there. This is what we're dealing with, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, yellow, green, and green, okay? And there you can see, it's all there. And so if we pick items in here, it should wind up working. And what I wound up putting together with it, the first thing I picked was this one. And we can see that that winds up being our yellow and our orange. And then the last one that I picked was the green. 
and there it is over here. So all of it is falling within this analogous color scheme. Okay, look at this. What if I put this one in? <laughs> That's not good, right? <laughs> because, uh, well, it should, you know, it should work. It's kind of the red violet, but you know, we're we're this print is in here, and so if we're going to then throw this in, it's just kind of an outlier, right? It's sort of the sore thumb. It doesn't really work. What if we put that one in? Um, I think if you were reaching, you could do that, but you're kind of skipping over this one. And so it's not really analogous, and so it's not as harmonious as it could be. So this is this is kind of a subtle thing, um, but this, to me, works much better. And I'm sure it's because of this arrangement on the color wheel. The last little bit of information that I'll leave you with is this. I will tell you that I've started a Pinterest board with all kinds of different color swatches and I'll link to that board down below and check that out and go look at the swatches and I found this particular designer, this artist, while I was trying to put my notes together for this video today. And this woman has a really good channel. I mean, it's really good. If you're super interested in delving deeply into color theory, she's got some really good videos and I'll link to her below. I'm considering getting her swatch collection because it looks really, really good. So, uh, but I did pin several of those palettes and you can go over there and look and just kind of see what, see what professional designers put together as harmonious color schemes. I think you'll find that useful. And something else that I, as I was doing the research for this video that I realized is Apartment Therapy has, which is a website, it's a huge website and they do like designscapes um, for different rooms of your home and you know kitchens, living rooms, bathrooms, whatever. Um, but it's all really beautifully designed and they talk a lot about using these colors and so how to use the color wheel in designing this, the, the, I don't know what you would call it, the colorscape I guess for a room. And I thought it was helpful looking on apartment therapy because it was it was interesting to see the colors in 3D. You know, it's one thing to sit here and look at this picture, okay? And to say, you know, yellow is the opposite of violet and orange is the opposite of blue and red is blah, 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 you know. That's very dry. And when you look at it, you think, well, I don't know if I like that or not. But if you go to apartment therapy and you look through some of the rooms, and I uh, pinned several of them on that board, it's very interesting to see how they mix and match the colors, especially when they get into the red, orange, and the blue, green, like the teal, teal and orange. That is a very well-known color combination and it's used in filmmaking a lot. Teal and orange, that's a big thing. And so to, to see the colors in the room, I thought that was a really, I thought that was a helpful way to see color combinations outside of this kind of, you know, bland wheel. But Starting here is where you want to start. So what can I tell you that's helpful? What I'll tell you that's helpful is go to your stash and pick a fabric and just pick something, anything. Close your eyes and just grab something off the shelf and see where it falls on the wheel. And just spend a little time, spend an hour where you just pull like the opposites and pull from your own stash and see what you can come up with. and. Uh, it might surprise you and I would love to hear from you about what you find <laughs> and what surprises you about the combinations. I think what we'll do is we'll let this video be what it is for today and then we'll just do more where we'll look at some fabrics and we'll talk about why they work and why the designer uh, picked certain colors. Maybe that should be the next video that we take a look at together. We'll pull, I'll go through my stash, I'm looking at stuff now, and we'll pull pull a few of the uh, prints and we'll just uh, look at why the designer picked what they picked for that print. 
Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I sure hope that it gets you thinking and gets your creative wheels turning and gets you excited to go and do some things that maybe you haven't done before. That's it, and I will see you in the next video.